healed. He's going to come and minister the word tonight. And I've, I've, I've been really excited about this for a long time because I wanted to uh, introduce you guys to the ministry of Jeff and his teaching. And he is a studier of the word of God. And so I'm, I'm just, I've been looking forward to it all week, man. And so you guys are in for an absolute treat tonight. And so would you just make Jeff feel welcome as he comes and minister. You know, I first want to give honor to where honor is due. So, you know, I met Joe and not so long ago, I was sitting right there and Daniel and uh, Jennifer had invited us to come and we came and we had an instant bond. I can't describe it. We really didn't even say words to each other. It was just, it was just there. And uh, so we, we're just drawing closer and closer together, but you know what I've seen uh, here is excellence. I've seen stewardship of what God has given, and I see a heart and a hunger to bring God's kingdom here on earth and to try to make it impossible <laughs> for people not to know Jesus. And what an honor just to be in the house and, and to be here and, and to share with you uh, today. So thank you for the opportunity and the privilege. I'm, I'm just uh, thrilled to thrilled to be here. So. I want to talk to you uh, about a personal encounter that I had uh, just recently, within the last couple of weeks, uh, where I was asked the question that's on the board up here, are you ready? And you know, you get that, asked that question in a lot of different ways, but in a lot of different methods that come at you and whatever, but in this case, um, I felt the sense and the presence of the Lord who was asking me, are you ready? And so this picture is actually from a time where uh, my wife and I got to go to the beach. Um, I think it might be uh, from a beach trip with a couple over here that said I do on the beach. Um, and so we got rid of them and they did their thing and we got to be on the beach by ourselves. It was a cool thing. But, you know, so when, when you're going to the beach, though, what do you do? You, you, you have to get ready, right? You think about it. If we, if we take a trip somewhere, so we were going to the beach and I had an assignment that I was going to be doing. I was going to help officiate their wedding, and that was a big honor and blessing to be able to do that. But I had to be ready, right? I had to bring my Bible. I had to bring, you know, notes about things. I had to bring their vows, and, you know, thankfully I remembered all that thing. I had to bring something other than a bathing suit because you don't want to see this on a wedding photo, right? Uh, like that. So, and, uh, you know, one of the things that resonates with me that Joe says often is if we're meeting, we're eating. So if I'm traveling to the beach, I'm going to be eating pretty good. And so I'd bring food with me. I had to think about all those things. Am I ready? To, am I prepared? Am I I'm ready to go? And so in my journey with the Lord, we are in a season right now where there's a lot of things we are just seeking him for. Ministry opportunities, work opportunities, housing opportunities. All these things are happening and we're praying and we've been fasting. We fasted with the church first 21 days. We fasted since that and we're seeking him. And what happens when we seek him? We find him, right? But sometimes, right, there's some things. And so the other day, I was looking for any opportunity I could just to kind of get away from my workplace. I don't, I don't work that far away from, from here. And one of the places that the Lord really speaks to me is when I go to Panther Creek. So y'all been there, out there? If you haven't, go there. It's awesome. But if I can get in nature, I really have the presence of God. I can sense that. And so uh, I called Tracy and I said, hey, I'm going to run out here at lunchtime and, and take some time to, to go to Panther Creek. So I pulled into the drive there and... Um, I was pulling in and, and you know right when you pass the campground right when you're going up the hill to get to the lookout so it was just all of a sudden and i don't know if you've ever experienced this where there was a tangible weighty presence that invaded the space i was in in that in my truck and i sensed it was the lord and it was it, it was so heavy that i became very emotional i may become emotional now but, but it was like, wow, and that's all I could say, <laughs> it was wow. And Trace was like, are you all right? I'm like, wow, whoa, and she goes, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I, I'm fine. She goes, oh, it, it, the Lord's speaking to you. And I said, she goes, I'm gonna hang up. <laughs> and you spend time with God, right? And so I was like, this was just so, it wasn't anxiety, it wasn't fear, 
it was the awe of God, right? And it was like, wow, he's wanting an encounter with me. And I'm by myself, and it's like, wow, this is really incredible. And so I began to drive up the hill, and then as close to tangibly hearing an audible voice, but it's the still small voice, I hear the question, are you ready? And, and it, it took me off guard. I was like, am I ready? And he, and he reminded me, you're seeking me about all of these things. What if I answered you today? Are you ready? Are you ready? You know, have you ever heard somebody say, be careful what you ask for? You might just get it. Does anybody know there are several dangerous prayers? One is if you pray for patience, it's an instant answer. That's right. <laughs> right? You know, be careful about those things. But he started to challenge me in my spirit to say, hey, are you ready? If I answered your prayer about your ministry, are you ready? If I answered your prayer about housing, are you ready? If I answered your prayer about your work, are you ready? And wow, I was like, ooh. And I, and I told him, I said, Lord, I, I don't know how to respond right now in this minute. And he says, I want you to say what's on your heart. And so I couldn't think of anything. So I started singing. I won't do that tonight because <laughs> that, would, that would be, there would be a vast exodus. The blacks would break. It would be bad. But <clears throat> how many of you know, though, to be a worshiper, you don't have to be a talented singer. Right. right? It's about your heart. It's about where you're at. And so with everything in me, I'm in this car. People are driving by. It's like, that's a nut job because I'm just like going crazy, right? Worshiping him and, and, and doing that. But as he was speaking to me about, am I ready? Um, I just felt uh, the other day, I was, I was, it was actually Sunday morning. I woke up and I had a different message. I told Joe I had something else prepared. And I sent him a note and I said, look, God just downloaded this on me this morning. And I think maybe that would be something that I gave him a choice to, you pick. So he picked this. So if you don't like it, blame him. Uh, <laughs> But here's what, here's what I want to think about. Just like we got ready for the beach, if we're seeking God for some things, it's important that we prepare ourselves. It's important that we do what we can do. So I want to go to the Word. Let's turn uh, to 2 Timothy chapter 2, and verse 14 through 15. Let's see if my eyes can work that far. Yeah, I think so. It says, remind them of these things and change them before God not to fight about words. This is useless and leads to ruin of those who listen. Be diligent to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who doesn't need to be ashamed, correctly teaching the word of truth. I want to focus on that highlighted section right there. Present yourself to God as one approved. So when I'm looking through the scripture and I'm thinking about that, it's like to be ready then I need to take action. I need to do some things to prepare myself because I'm going to go before God and say, God, I've given everything that I can to you. I'm preparing myself. Think in the Bible of all the stories where there was emptiness. There's 5,000 people that are hungry. So what does Jesus say? Go gather baskets and he fills them. You know, what happens when they run out of line at the wedding feast? Go get the water pots and fill them. And so there's always something that God's looking to say, hey, bring to me your brokenness. Bring to me your emptiness. Come to me with all those things that you have lack in and watch what I can do. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that's important for us to understand is that we need to move forward to show ourselves to be ready. So I'm thinking about this, you know, readiness. So go ahead. to I've got a definition according to Jeff. <laughs> this, don't look this up in Webster. It's not the same. So readiness. Being diligent or intentional actions to present yourself prepared before God. Readiness doesn't happen by accident. Readiness doesn't, you don't just fall into readiness like, oh, I'm ready. It doesn't happen that way. It's intentional. And, and sometimes it takes effort. It takes us being diligent, persistent, steadfast, applying ourselves, doing what we can do. Now, here's the thing. We don't want to try to do what God does. That's not, that's not our job. But what we do is what we can do. So I have to ask myself and the things I'm seeking him for now about work, about ministry, about housing, about all those things is what represents my empty vessel? What do I come and bring before him? And what, how do I do that? So I want to talk about these things. So today we're going to talk about three points. I'm a, I'm a list guy. I'm a point guy. I'm a checklist guy. And so this is what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to talk about, are you ready? 
is number one, there's more things than this, right? This is not an exhaustive list, but it's something that God's showing me and I wanted to share with you. Number one, present yourself physically before God. So let's uh, again go to the word and it says this, Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. How many of you have trouble sitting still? <laughs> The worst sitter stiller is my wife. She's, her sitter stiller is broken. Uh, it doesn't work uh, very well. Uh, so <laughs> she, she's not, there's nothing that's gonna be still about her. But here's the thing, is that, does anybody else's life feel a little overwhelming sometimes, a little chaotic sometimes, things around you are beyond what seems to be your control? And so as you walk through that place, it's like, I'm going here, I'm going there, and, those of you who have kids, I got grandbabies. So in fact, breaking news, hot off the press, just minutes ago before service, we get, we're get we on FaceTime, like, I'm like, Chris, just wait just a minute, don't start playing, because my little grandbaby, EBJ, in Florida, is riding her bike for the first time. So she's got her training wheels, I didn't even know she had training wheels on, and she's like, she's showing that, and uh, yeah, it's really good. Now, Evie is a little bit like Tracy, so, you know, she's uh, wearing little kids' clothes, and she's six years old and she's probably wearing like a 3t i mean she's little she's really small and so i don't know where they found a bike this small but it's the littlest bike i've seen and she's just zipping around and i'm like Woo and uh you know that's awesome but you know those grandbabies you know they mean they mean the world to us and we connect with them you know and, and we we put ourselves in the position to to have love with them but you know when i look at at, at them and I think about, you know, we don't get to see them as often as we as we want, but I have to prioritize time for them. And it's the same with God. When you want to prepare yourself to be ready, you will need to prioritize that time. Yeah. And sometimes you need to shut all of the stuff outside yeah. off. So in the last several weeks, I haven't had much time to do that. But here's what I found. When I make even seven minutes of time, we've got a couple of folks from our small group here tonight. Thank you for coming, bless you. And uh, I was just driving on the side of the road, going back for, it was one of these times where, you know, I had a, I had about 20 minutes to get lunch. So I ran, got through the drive through ate something terrible, unhealthy. But I looked at my watch and I said, I got seven minutes. And I pulled off the side of the road, <laughs> uh, <laughs> over off of 160. I'm literally in the gravel and I'm just like, God, this is the time I have right now, and I'm going to be still before you. And in that seven minutes, he brought unbelievable things to me in that seven minutes. God will honor your heart. God will honor that time that you take to be still. So I want to go then to the next verse down there. It's, it's right up there. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. First Samuel 3.10. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Listening is a really lost art, and it's hard to find someone. I'm challenged by this, right? Every time we are interacting and engaging with something, think about this, when we're talking with someone, when we're communicating with something, are you listening to what they're saying? Or are you preparing what you're going to say back? Are you pausing long enough to just say, you know what, I'm going to process this. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hear that. I'm going to reflect back to you what I heard you say. And it's kind of a lost art. We were so wondering, you know, busy to try to get our word, get our say, do what we have. This is a, a clue for a marriage relationship. So, we shouldn't spend so much time trying to counterpunch, but to be compassionate, empathetic, and hear, right. and hear the heart of our spouse, yes. even if they're presenting it in a way that may be a little more intense than we like. <laughs> but here's the clue, it takes two to bite. That's right. So you be the one that takes the higher road and, and see what happens with the listening ear. The thing about this is that God Almighty, because of Jesus Christ, you know, when sin came to the, the earth, we were separated. We were not, Adam and Eve thrown out of the garden, and there's a veil, a literal veil that's in between God and man that only the high priest could go into. Jesus, it says, rent, tore that veil. And then it says now, because of what he did, because he went to sit on the right hand of the Father to make intercession for us, that we can now go boldly before God, God Almighty, and cry out to him, Abba, Father. Daddy, God, wow. If we have access to God Almighty, these two ears should be 
listening to what he has to say. But we have to be in a place where we put ourselves in a place of stillness and quiet. So physically what we need to do to say, are you ready? Is I'm gonna put myself in a position where I'm gonna be ready because when you answer, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a way that I'm gonna do what I can do physically to say, you know, I'm gonna create space because you're my priority, God. I'm gonna create space so you can come and invade. I love that. The Holy Spirit, invade this place. Invade it. Guess what? He's always here. He is always here. God is omnipresent. He's always here. So why don't we always tangibly sense him? Why don't we always tangibly experience that? Is it his problem? Probably not. But if we can tune ourselves in, and I believe one way we can do that is just put, make ourselves be still, and we can say, you know what, God? Here I am. I am. Here's the thing. We need to acknowledge he's sovereign. His ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. I may not understand. I may be confused, but it's okay. I need to die to self and then look to him and say, I look to you from where my help comes. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from him. And he will make a way where there seems to be. I don't have to figure that part out. But what I do need to do, I need to put myself in a posture, in a position to say, I don't care about anything else in this moment, God. I care about you, and my ear is attentive to you. Because what happens when we hear? When we hear, faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word of God. We need that in our life. It also says that without faith, it's impossible to please him. I want to please him. I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. I want to listen to him. I want to still myself before him. And we all have more than enough to do in any given day. And we can make all the, the, the we can make all the reasons, I would call them excuses, to, to, as to why we won't make time. Because you'll make time for other things. You know, I make time to eat. <laughs> Maybe too much. <laughs> right? That's why it's powerful to fast. Because you're saying, you know what, I'm going to die. To that part my physical need i'm going to rely on you god whatever it is i'm going to i'm going to prioritize you over over facebook i'm going to prioritize you over whatever else it's going to be over the ball game oh that hurts your pastor and i have a similar passion you know tracy wanted me to wear ohio state shirt. Yeah, yeah. and you know i, I should have i knew daniel might come and I didn't want to just break his spirit, you know, <laughs> and all that kind of thing. But, but number one, if we're going to be presenting ourselves ready to receive from God, we need to put ourselves in a position where we can hear from him. Right. And we're prepared to do that, right? So number two, prepare yourself spiritually for God. I love what you say every Sunday. Is If you want to have your best year this year, then have your best year spiritually. That's right. And that is absolute truth. Tracy and I do a lot of counseling, have done it for decades of time, and the first question we ask in a counseling uh, setting, where is your relationship with God right now? Scale of one to five, five being, oh man, rapture grill, I am first out. <laughs> one, I don't even know if I believe. Mm -hmm. And if people are honest, sometimes we have to check their honesty, right? So we have some come in and say, I'm five. I was like, really, five, that's awesome. I said, when's the last time you prayed? Uh, that would be 2013 <laughs> this is when I last prayed. I said, oh, really? But here, here's the thing, is almost every time we'll see that the relationship they have with God has somehow deteriorated and their relationship around them is doing the same. It's so important that if we want to have our best year, <laughs> that we will have it the best year spiritually. And if we want to hear from God, if we want to say, God, I'm, I'm ready before you, then we need to get in a place where spiritually we're locked in. Let's read what it says in Ephesians. There's a lot of things we could take, but spiritually, I'm going to just focus on one. This is talking about the armor of God. Stand therefore with truth like a belt around your waist, righteousness like armor on your chest, and your feet sandaled with the readiness for the gospel of peace. There's our word readiness. If we want to connect with God, if we want to hear from God, then part of making ourselves ready is to go to this. This book is life. This book is a weapon. It's a two-edged sword. We can defend, we can be offensive with it. It's instructions that tells us for every situation. So here's the thing, if you're struggling with finances, 
He's Jehovah Jireh, the provider. If you're struggling with your health, he's our healer, and by his stripes we are healed. So find what is in this book about truth, because what does the truth do? It sets you free. The truth will set you free. If you get to a space where you say, you know what, I'm struggling so bad, find out what God says about it. And start declaring that over your life. Yes. The situation is going to happen. It says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Don't, don't believe someone is going to say, you say, oh, God, come into my heart. And then all of a sudden it's easy street. That's a lie. <laughs> it's not true. If God sent his own son to go to a cross, it's not that he's going to put things upon us, but he is allowing it. It's in his permissive will. And you know what? When we go through struggles, I believe in everything. God is working for our good. He's turning things out that the enemy turned for evil and turning them to good. And he's going to strengthen us through those battles. If we draw closer to him, right. it's an opportunity. It's an invitation. Man, this is out of my control. What does the word say? It says he won't give you anything that you can't handle. Sometimes that seems like a lie. It's like, God, I don't know if I can handle one more thing. You know what? I'll tell you, you probably can't. But if you connect with him, Right? When I am weak, he is strong. He will carry me. He will lead me. He will, you know, I love that footprints thing, right? There's one set of, there's two sets of footprints, and there's one that's like, God, why did you leave me? That was the toughest time. That's the time I carried you. He's here to carry you through those situations. And so when we look at our situation and we want to be ready to hear from him, we need to look and say, you know what? We need to put on all of our armor, but we need to be prepared and fill ourselves up with this, with this truth. Right. Because if God then speaks to you about something, guess what? When he answers your prayer, many times, maybe most times, it's going to be something that you're going to be like, really? That's what you want? You're calling me to go there? Quick story. So 15 years ago or so, I'm sitting in a little town in Greenman, Ohio. Got a great job. I'm a director over eight manufacturing plants. We built the house of our dreams. My papa, my dad cut the wood that did the trim in that house. Took it to the sawmill, dried it out, molded it, shaped it. I mean, we built our forever home in a place we had prayed for and we had used for ministry. We had opportunities where we leading, uh, you know, marriage ministry where we were, you know, we grew up in this little town of 3,000 people, knew everybody. And it's like, yeah, life seems pretty good. Family's there. Tracy's family is still there. And God speaks to us and says, I'm calling you to East Tennessee. Really? <laughs> you sure? Now, Tracy is Peter, if you do the analogy of a disciple. You know, so if you mess with her, she's going to lock your ear off. So just be careful. But if she hears, and she hears a whisper that even has a hint of God, let's go! I have a disease. Pray for me. It's called analysis paralysis. God says something, same thing he says to her, and I'm going, is that really you, God? Does that speak of this in the word of God? Not that any of this wrong, but you know what? If you just sit and dwell, you can talk yourself out of just about anything, right? You can, you can do that. But God's calling us to say, you know what? Renew your mind. Renew your mind. Transform your mind with this word. Don't just study it and know the words, but allow it to make a little trip about 12 inches down to get in your heart. And then when it gets in your heart, what does it say? Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. And what your mouth speaks, what does it say? Life and death are in the power of what comes out of this. We do that if we walk in that way when we can answer and say yeah god i'm gonna be ready because you know what i've done i've done what i can do and you know what how many of you know that when pastor joe reads a scripture there are days when god says i'm going to show you something new he's a student of the word he's studied for years he's preached a million sermons but you know what i know because when i open this book it's like wow i didn't see that i never saw that before because God's bigger than what we can even imagine and fathom and think. So we need to get into the word. If we want to be ready before God, we need to get our, ourselves ready spiritually. We can do a lot of other things. We need to pray. We need to fast. We need to seek. And we need to be serious about it. 
in our spirit. And if we do that, the best life will follow. Number three, last point. We need to position ourselves away from evil, from darkness, position ourselves towards God. Here, here's here's a, a lesson I had to learn the hard way. If this represents darkness and evil, and God says, you know what, are you, and I'm asking God, this is, these are things I want, and God reveals to me and says, you know what, that thing right there I need you to separate yourself from. So I can turn my back on it, but that's easy. That's not enough. That's not enough. There has to be a step of faith yeah. that moves towards what God is calling you. And here's what can happen is you can get tangled up and say, you know what, God? I don't know. Well, you know, so I've turned away. I've got 180 degree options. Do I go left? Do I go straight? Do I go right? I don't know. God, tell me what I need to do. And sometimes he may not tell you exactly what to do. But he's looking for you to say, you know what, God? I trust you. So I'm going to take a step. Yeah. And when he sees that step and that act of obedience, he knows your heart. And when we do that, he's looking down and I believe he says, you know what, I think you're ready. I think you're ready because you're willing to step out into what is the unknown and unseen. You're walking by faith and not by sight. And rarely is God going to give you the journey all the way five years from now. I love five-year plans. I love goals. I love setting targets. I love that. That just I, it drives me. a passion for that. And God usually says, I'm a God of order, but the kingdom doesn't necessarily work like that. So I'm going to tell you to take a step. And I'm going to tell you to take another step. And then sometimes you're going to take the wrong step. But here's the thing. Even though in my spirit it, it concerns me so much, like, God, what if I do that? What if I fail? There's risk. What if I make a mistake? And he says, I'm God. <laughs> I'm God. What if I fall? Then his right hand comes down and he pulls you out. What if I make a mistake? My grace is sufficient. My mercy yeah. is more than enough. It endures forever. I'm faithful to a thousand generations. He's always there for you. He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. But I believe that he's honored when we take a step. Even if it happens to be wrong. He wants you to guide and direct you in the right way. But we need to put faith in action. And so when we're looking and we're asking about things, we need to look at our lives and say, you know what, God? I'm going to trust you. So when we were going through this uh, scenario several years ago, a decade plus ago to move here, I didn't want to. <laughs> I had what I wanted. You know, I built a house. I had my family, people in the community respected us. We're active in the church. It's like, yeah, come on. It's all right. There's not a whole lot more important, God's most important than my family. And God's saying, you need to move away. That's hard. That's hard. You know, and so I was struggling with that. <clears throat> in my whole life, God has given me great favor which I am so thankful for. I think he does that to weak people. <laughs> He's like, he knows I can't take that much. So I go, bless that boy. Just bless him. Just bless him. Right? And so there was a season where dishonestly I was being rebellious and I was shutting my ear to the Lord because I was afraid. And I didn't want to do that. And he told me in a time of fasting, he said, I'm going to take my hand of favor off of you. You've had the favor of man. But you're dependent on that. You need to trust me. And he took that off of me. And so things started happening. So I was working at a place. My boss had told me just a month before in front of my peers. How many of you know what I'm about to say you don't ever want to have happen in front of your peers? So these people are all plant managers. And I'm over eight different facilities. And we're all reporting to one executive vice president. And in a, in a group of all of us, he says, Jeff, you are the best person I've ever hired. You know what a bullseye is? <laughs> These are all type A, highly motivated, aggressive people who are like saying, you're not going to look good much longer. <laughs> right? And so it was crazy. So one of my peers was promoted um, because my boss left the company. And that peer was promoted, and now I was reporting to him. 
Less than a month after that statement, I'm the best person he ever hired. He writes me up with five pages and says, in 45 days, if you don't improve, you're fired. I don't like failure. I hate it. I despise it. I'll do whatever I have to do almost. And God took me through this season. And in that season, there was a moment where there was a defining point where I had to take a gigantic risk, which in any normal circumstance, would have been immediate termination. And I said, God, I, 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 you know this is what you're asking me to do. And he just responded and said, do you trust me? And I was like, I trust you to give me a way out of this situation. That's what I trust you with, because this ain't cool. There's, there's got to be another way. And he said, do you trust me? And I called Tracy on the phone, and I said, do I trust him? And really what I was looking at, because it was like our livelihood was going to be taken away. I said, honey, this is what I've heard. And I just need to, you to know you and I to be one. And you agree when I walk in to this office, I'm going to do what, I mean, should I do what God says? And of course, Peter. <laughs> Hallelujah! Yes, you do that! You get in there, God will be with you. You know, she gets all holy of your stuff going. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, that's not very supportive. <laughs> it's like, you're supposed to say, no, honey, don't do that hard thing, no. But no, she's over there saying, go, boy, yeah. keep going. So I walk in, I sit in front of the executive vice president, the head of human resources, and they told me I had to bring something in there which God didn't allow me to bring. And I walk in, just nothing. So the boss that had written me up said, he doesn't even have what we asked him to have. This meeting's over. Let's, let's move towards termination. And I said, if I could just say a word. I don't have what you asked me to bring. And you guys may not understand this, but uh, God told me that I'm supposed to move to Tennessee. And he told me that I need to transition, but transition well. And so... He told me to tell you that. He gets up, puts his hand on the desk, and raises up, and I thought, here it comes. Here it comes. Like, that's God, I hate this. And he says, I had never in my career ever had someone do something like this to me. And I was like, I bet you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> and he said this, and I've never been more impressed in my life. In a minute, that five-page report never was mentioned again. In a minute, he calls, it's a privately held company, he called one of the executives above him, there's only one other person above him in the company, calls him, he comes and he has a talk with me and he says, whatever you need. We'll do a transition plan for six months. During that six months, I had really severe uh, health problems and uh, I had vertigo, if you've ever had vertigo, it's not a good thing, but mine was called migraine-induced vertigo. So if I would get in a room this big with a high ceiling, my, main, my mind couldn't process space, and so my office was in a big factory with a ceiling higher than this in a second floor, and I had to walk through, and I'd literally hug the wall, walk into my, my office. And so this person who just a few days before had written me up, you know, wanted to fire me, said, Jeff, we're going to move you to an office on the first floor so you don't have to mess with them. And after a while, I got no job offers. I was applying everywhere I could in this region. Nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. My health was bad. And he, he called me in after five months, and he said, uh, Jeff, today's your last day. And I said, now, wait a minute. We have an agreement. Six months, you, you can't do this. He goes, Jeff, you need to be quiet. And I was like, all right. And he said... We have your people gathered in a conference room. I had about 40 people working for me. And he said, you can go in and say your last words to them, whatever you want to say, just fine. We're going to pay you for a month of time. And what we want you to do is get healthy and whatever we can do. So the executive vice president says, I want you to write your recommendation letter and I'll sign it. I wrote it. I brought it to him. He ripped it up, said it's not good enough. 
I need you to say more positive things about yourself. You're an excellent employee, and I want to fully endorse you. What in the world is going on, right? So they helped me find a position here. But that was in response to saying, God, I trust you. So I just want to share with you tonight, if you're in a situation where God, you're seeking him, and you haven't heard from him, he maybe is asking you a similar question. Are you ready? Are you ready? Have you put yourself in position physically where you said, God, I'm going to be still before you, and I'm going to listen to what you have to say? Have you put yourself in a position spiritually where you really hungered and thirsted, like it really, your life depended on it, and you got into this word? Because it will become bread. Jesus says it this way. He said, if you eat the bread that I offer to you, you'll never go hungry again. He, he will sustain you. It won't just fade away like when you have a pals, you know. It, it, it's it's going to be more for you than that. And if we can put ourselves in a place where we, we, we put ourselves in the word and then say, you know, God, I'm declaring you the truth over my life. I'm aligning with you. Then all of a sudden, that Bible verse that says, you know what, ask anything in my name and I'll give it to you. I'll give you the desires of your heart. That's not something God just put in there because he, he wanted to mess with you. But when you align in his face with his thoughts, your thoughts become his thoughts. Then all of a sudden those things you ask are his desire for you. Yeah. He already knew your purpose, your plan. Before you were even in your mama's womb, he knew what he had for you. So he knows what you need to do to get ready. So if we get into this word, if we still ourselves, if we listen to his voice, and if we take action, Here's what I see a lot, is that people get pieces of scripture and then hang on to them and apply them maybe in the wrong way. Have you done all to stand? Stand therefore. Stand therefore doesn't mean you're not doing anything. You've got to still have the armor of God. You know what the devil tells you in the Bible? Put on the full armor of God. Read it, Ephesians 6. It never says to take it off. Right. It never says, oh yeah, take a rest. <laughs> <laughs> just put it in the closet. It's not like that. But standing, there is a place for standing. But it's standing knowing that, you know what? When God calls me to move, I move. Right. I don't just say fixate in one spot and, and say I'm not going to move forward. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust him. I'm going to lean into him. And I'm going to trust him. I won't tell you when God is asking me this question, are you ready? It took me a while to say yes Right? It took me a, a minute. But when I started to, to, to pray about it and seek him and quiet myself and listen and then commit to him and say, God, I know I can trust you, so I'm ready. And so we're going to take a step. Whatever that looks like for you. For us, it looks like, you know, some different things. So we're doing those things. Sometimes those are hard things. Sometimes they're things that we don't understand. The Bible tells us. Trust in the Lord, all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He will direct your path. You can trust God Almighty. Yes. You can trust Him. You can trust Him. And then if you trust Him, and you then answer that question, are you ready, and say yes, watch out. Right? The enemy's going to be under your feet. Right? We're going to go, I think you said, into the enemy's camp, and we're going to take back what he stole from you. Some have said 2024 is the year of the open door. So I'd encourage you, are you ready for the open door that God has for you in your life? Are you ready? If not, God's a forgiving God. Do the things. Do what he tells you to do, because he wants you to be ready. He wants you to be ready. He wants you to walk in that way. So I'm just thankful. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share. You know, so if it's okay, um, I think that it'd be great if we just took an opportunity. So first of all, thanks for being here on a Wednesday night. I know the balls are playing right now. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so uh, I'm guessing they're playing Auburn. I'm guessing they're gonna get whooped tonight. But maybe not, James, just calm down back in the back. I saw James Patton's, you know, firearm on me. 
So. <laughs> But you know what? There's all kinds of readiness that we can have in this life. And I would imagine that each one of us has that question that God has posed to us. Are you ready? And it looks different. And you know what? There's strength. It says we're, you know, two or more gathered. He's in our midst. He's here right now to deal with whatever that is. So if you're at a space where it's just like, you know what? I want to join faith. If we, the Bible says it this way. One can put a thousand of the enemy's forces to fight. Two can put 10,000. God is a God of multiplication. He's not a God of division. He's a God of unity. He's a God of multiplication. Think about this, the Trinity. How do you get one and one and one getting three? You have to multiply. The two become one. How do we get two to become one? One times one. God is always multiplying. He's always multiplying. It says that, you know what, if you're falling down, it says, you know what, I want to give you double for your sin. I want to take you from someplace. So when you're looking at saying, are, am I ready? If God's asking you in, that, in your heart, are you ready? It would be great and a great honor just to, to have an opportunity to, to pray with y'all uh, as you do that. So let, let's just go before the Lord and, and, and pray. And You know, what's beautiful about this house is if, it, if you feel moved, like you want to come to this altar, this altar is open. You know, I called Joe a few weeks ago, and it was a situation I was going through, and I was like, hey, you mind if I just come to the church? Tracy was doing some pain, and I was right up here at this altar just praying, right? Because it's open. This is the house of the Lord. And so if you don't have to come to the altar. I'm just saying, if God compels you to do that, you know what? Sometimes he does. He's going to say, I want you to go forward. That's uncomfortable. But he wants you to do that as a physical symbol to say, I'm taking that step. So I just want to just invite to, to come as we, as we pray. Thank you. So Lord, I, I just thank you. Lord God, you are a big God. You are a good God. And Lord, you ask us questions that challenge us sometimes. But Lord, I know that we don't have to have the answer. Lord, I know that with me, Lord God, you've shown me time and time and time again Lord God, that I can trust you. So Lord God, I just ask you allow our, all of our hearts to open up widely to you. Lord God, that we can trust you. Have our eyes in the veil and the mask or the, the blindness we have in this earth, Lord God, to be stripped away so we can see your goodness and your plan. Have our ears open to the truth, Lord God, that we hear what your plans are for us. Lord God, and then we take bold step of faith. Lord God, moving away from whatever situation you call up to us away from, Lord God, and we move into what you have for our destiny. Father, I just thank you. It's humbling to be before you. You're such a mighty God. Lord God, I just submit to you right now. Lord God, I put these people, your people, Lord God, who you call chosen, you call your sons and daughters. Lord God, I just pray for them. Lord God, that you strengthen them, you encourage them, you build their faith. Let them see what you have for them. Lord God, let them take action to move. Let them prepare themselves. So Lord, I just ask that, that you supernaturally allow chaotic situations to come with the call. Lord, that you allow chaos and busyness and confusion, Lord God, that you as you spoke to the water, that you would just say, peace, be still. So Father, I just ask, Lord God, that as we present ourselves in these moments of stillness, Lord God, that you move in this house in a mighty way. Lord God, come, Lord Jesus, flow in this space, Holy Spirit. Touch your people, Lord God. We bind and rebuke the enemy in Jesus' name and by his blood. And Father, we trust you and know that you are working things out for our good. So Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory in Jesus' mighty, mighty name.
no weapon formed against us will prosper. I thank you, Lord God, that you've made us more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, your Son. So, Father, I just ask that as we, Lord God, depart this evening, Lord Father, that you go with us. And you are going ahead of us. You're beside of us. You're behind us. You're all around us. So, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you for your good and good, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Help us to walk in our next. Help us to walk and be ready, Lord God. Show